Hi guys and welcome back to another Cinemot video and today we're going to be ranking the big six in the Premier League's front three. In judging the front three we're going to be looking at quality, depth, value for money, just the value they have now, versatility and their potential like sort of including like their age in that as well. Right, starting in last place, it's a pretty obvious one, they've sold pretty much half their squad this transfer window. It's Chelsea. You can say you want about Chelsea's front three. They've signed a lot of Lou players, so a lot of them are perhaps they may be good, but a lot of them are quite untested. The likes of Nicholas Jackson, Mudrick's yet to come to form, Madueke and Chukwamika have still had very lim like limited minutes. And actually, because there are a lot of the players are looking to leave, like Ziyech and Lukaku, and maybe some other players might go out alone, like they signed something like a really young geezer, I think he's Portuguese, he might be going out alone. There is maybe like an actual lack of depth there as well. Yeah, just lack of depth, lack of real quality. Yeah. I mean, look at the, at the names. It's just Nkuku and Sterling are the only, you, they're your only guarantees for any consistent performances out of that whole list. The amount of money to spend and to end up with the sixth best attack in the in the top six is very poor. Yeah, and you look at it, obviously there's a lot of potential there. Nicholas Jackson could be amazing. Yeah. Michaela Mudrick could, could be amazing. amazing. Nkunku could take his game to a new level. But and at the moment. Obviously, yeah, at the it's moment, <laughs> it's it's not guaranteed, right? But they score, I reckon they score well on like age and potential. Yeah. But and versatility, a lot of them players can play across the, across front, the front three. three. Yeah, but in terms of depth and actual quality, quality. They're, they don't score very highly at all, really, for me. And also, a lot of the value's probably gone down for them. No one would pay 80 million for Mudrick now. <laughs> No one's going to pay the 50, 60 million they paid for Sterling now. Chukwamika, Madueke, Brozier have probably all still held their value. Brozier's probably gone up in value. He's an academy graduate, right? Yeah. I mean, the thing is, maybe they're not too bothered about the sell because they want these players to be there for Long years. Term. Yeah, true. And then score lots of goals for them. But, and win trophies. Exactly. And win trophies, but that could be a bit of a long way off. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. Currently looking at the, the state of that attack. Yeah. At fifth place, they're going to be disappointed. The Red Devils. But I think you guys sort of know it. I know you're linked with Rasmus Hoyland. As we're filming, that's that's only just come out as like a potential link. Nothing confirmed on the player side from Fabrizio at all or anything really. Here we go. So at the moment, their strikers are really just Martial. But a left, like you've got like Rashford, Elanga, Garnacho. Two of them players are really good quality, Garnacho and Rashford. And right wing Sancho has obviously been a bit of a disappointment for Manchester United at the moment. But again, there is quality there. But whether he's a Manchester United player, I don't really know. And then Anthony's obviously had flares who have been good, but also it appears we've been really, really poor for Manchester United, given the money they paid for him. Yeah, I don't think they're miles away from a good attack. No, you know, I think they're. they're de I mean, clearly they're the striker. I mean, maybe. I mean, Kane is probably not going to happen anymore. But I think that that takes that attack to a whole new level. Let's go! Well, yeah, I don't think. But that's that's the sort of player they need. A number nine, big, big player to score them the goals. But you know, Rashford's quality player. He scored had a really good season last year. Yeah, he's a bit of a purple pack merchant. He is a bit of a like he'll score like he goes from unbelievable six in a row, to the unplayable. Yeah, definitely better than Chelsea. Definitely better than Chelsea. But, yeah. but um. Just not not quite there at the moment. And I feel like a lot of these, the a lot of Manchester United's attackers like Rashford, Garnacho, Sancho, yeah. Anthony, and Alanga yeah. will get better with a proper yeah, it's number a young, nine. It's a young attack. So I think Man United fifth place is probably about right in fourth place. I don't want to put them here, but you kind of have to given the quality they have. I've gone for Spurs. I think it's pretty obvious, right? The main man, Harry Kane. Kane can make any him on his own makes his attack the fourth best in the league. Like if he had some like better quality around him, a better depth at Spurs. They'd probably be second or third, or f they couldn't even be first. Kane is that good for me yeah, as an actual definitely. player, um, but obviously I just think they lack a bit of depth and a bit of overall quality to be honest with Spurs. But Richarlison scored, I think, two or one league goal last oh, yeah. year. Come on, Richie lad, stay Richie lad. And Kulusevski had an off year last year. So Son so had an off year last year. So going off that, will they come back stronger this year? Def they definitely could. But will they is a completely different question. And the big question, does Kane leave? If Kane leaves, that attack is <laughs> ropey. Very ropey. It's tight ropey. Like, it's definitely the worst. The amount of Premier League goals that attack scored last year about Kane, it, it must be in single figures. I, Richarlison, Son, Kulu. They brought in Solomon, but it's not really enough to back I mean, up that attack. he scored four goals. Like, and I think he scored four in four games. So <laughs> yeah, and enough. Yeah. the rest of the season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a bit of a sub. It was a off the bench player. Yeah, like, um, under Postecoglou, we don't know what's going to happen, but that's why I put them in fourth. Place. Right in third place, I could easily argue for them to go second, but right now, you, you, some of them we've got a few unknown quantities in the attack that haven't really been given enough minutes or coming off of really good years. So it's, it's key not to overestimate them and to stick them too high when you know the quality ahead of them. So I'm actually going to have Arsenal in third place. Obviously, like great depth up front with Jesus and Havertz can play there. I don't think he will, but he could be like a plan B for Mikel Arteta. He's six foot four, I think he is. Yeah, he's big, right? So he, give, he although he doesn't throw his way around, he does give you a good option in the area. Yeah. Like half of his goals for Chelsea were scored with his head, 
which is quite a, a miracle stat, or quite a weird stat anyway. And then obviously you've got Balogun and Nketiah. Balogun had a great season in Ligue 1 last year, but he is potentially going out the door for about 40 million, 50 million euros. Um, left wings, Martinelli, absolute quality, absolute joke one-on-one. Showed his quality last year, got 15 goals, and had a bit of an injury to ruin the end of his season. But I think he's going to have a great year this year, only getting better. So I really look forward to these players, especially as Reece Nelson's well, signing a new deal this year, and Sacco. What more else is there to say in Trossard? Great depth of the bench. Yeah, I think third's fair enough. I mean, they're a good squad, but I don't know. Young, young, it's, it's, it helps you in some ways because you've got potential to grow, but also I think there was a bit of a lack of experience we saw at the back end of last season. Yeah, you know? actually coming to mind is the Martinelli pass through to Saka, which he messed up, Yeah. which then we could have we could have won that. I know we could have also lost on a knife edge, we could have won it with that yeah. pass was better. And also the missed penalty against West Ham for Saka. No, no, they've got goals. You know, Saka and Marcelli, great players on the wing. And then they've got the link, Jesus, Havertz. I think, I think both of them have good seasons, to be fair. I think third is pretty fair. Right, in second place, there sort of has to be there. Liverpool, strikers, Nunes, Jota. We've got Gakpo, Diaz, Salah. And then we've sort of chucked Elliot in there. He doesn't really play there, but sometimes if they're short on numbers, he can drop in. Maybe in an Europa League game this year, he'll probably play in the front yeah, three so. if Salah needs a rest. Liverpool squad is quite young as well. Too. They've, got, yeah. they've got a good mixture of young and experienced players. Like Salah is an experienced player. Jota's quite experienced. And then Diaz... Gakpo and Nunes are all very young and hungry. Yeah. Nunes, for me, he's so exciting to watch because he's so chaotic. Yeah. Like I've seen him in the Premier League this year. He's a bit of a donkey, but he's also just like ambling everywhere and so fast and so yeah. like physically gifted. Like He's going to score goals and he's yeah. going to create chances for teams. Yeah, I think like when you have Salah, I think that's got to put you, that put your attack right out there straight away. One yeah. of the best players in the Premier League. And then, yeah, I think Nunes this year is going to do a lot better than he did last year because I think, yeah, he's just so... the end of things running his legs off, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. And then, uh, and then I don't know. And then it's, they, they've got a nice, I think they're well-rounded, do you know what I mean? There's yeah. not an o- obvious dropout in any of them positions. Exactly. You're not, like, when you lose someone, you're not going to go, oh, we've got to play yeah. him now. Mate, apart from Salah, because you can't yeah. place him. But, yeah, Jotun coming for Nunes, Diaz, Gakpo, you know, that's very... Um, I think Gakpo is also very technically good. Yeah. Like, you see some of the goals he scored last year. I think it was the chip against Manchester United. Yes. He just rolls yeah, across yeah, and just lifts yeah. it over De Gea. Beautiful goal. I think he does have that technical excellence about him. Although he's perhaps not the fastest, not the strongest, he does have that technical ability. Anyway, moving on to the obvious number one. Manchester City, well done, you've done it again. You've got Erling Haaland, (laughs) what more can you say? Julian Alvarez, World Cup winner. Jack Grealish and Phil Foden, two of the best English talents, really. Technical players. Very technical players. Although I don't think we've still seen... I know people said Jack Grealish had a great season last year. I still don't think we've seen the best of him. No. Because he's, but he's play, show, yeah, he's playing well in the city system. He won yeah. the treble. What can you say, no. right? And then right wing. I know they're actually rumored to leave um, Mares and Bernardo Silva, but if they do, they replace them. But if not, they are so good. Like Mares might have the best first touch in football. Yeah, Harlan, thirty six Premier League goals. Probably he's up there with the best players in the world at the moment. And then when you put him around technical players that can feed in the ball, you don't have the best attack in the Premier League if you're not going to win the treble. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. It speaks for it. They speak for themselves. Absolute freaks of nature. Anyway, guys, that's been our ranking of the Premier League's attack. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? I think it's a pretty good list overall. Yeah. Make sure you like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.